Hey guys, it's Colleen Cedric, founder of Pet Nanny Coach, a company I created to help pet sitting businesses succeed. And today our topic is on mindset, which as many of you know, is my most favorite thing in the world to talk about. Uh, but today we're gonna talk about what's called an upper limit problem. phrase was coined by Gay and Kathleen Hendricks, and Gay Hendricks is the author of a fabulous book called The Big Leap. So when I read this book, I'm thinking like seven years ago, I had never heard of an upper limit problem. I got this book, I started reading, and I was like, oh my god, this is totally me. I cannot believe this. And then I was like, no, this can't, this can't be real. And I kept reading, and I kept reading, and I was like, oh my god. It's me. So what is an upper limit problem? An upper limit problem is a form of self-sabotage. So Gay Hendricks basically talks about how each of us have an internal thermostat of where we will allow ourselves to feel good. And as soon as we exceed that temperature, we automatically start doing things to sabotage ourselves to bring the thermostat back down to where we like it. I know, sounds insane, I get it. I would probably be thinking the same thing, or I was thinking the same thing when I first read it. I'm like, okay. Um, but as we're gonna go through these uh, 10 signs that you may have a upper limit problem, and I think you're gonna be like, whoa, I do this. But um, first I'm gonna give you Gay Hendricks' actual definition of it that he says in the book. He says, the upper limit problem is the human tendency to put the brakes on our positive energy when we've exceeded our unconscious thermostat setting for how good we can feel, how successful we can be, and how much love we can feel. So again, this is all going on in our subconscious mind, our unconscious mind. We don't know that we're doing these things, but we do them to ourselves anyway to stop ourselves on our tracks from getting above that thermostat temperature. All right, so I'm gonna read the 10 signs, and if any of these possibly sound like you, you yourself may have an upper limit problem. All right, so we're gonna get started. The first sign that you may have an upper limit problem is that you have an income cap that you can't seem to break. All right, so your first few years of business, you should be having explosive growth year to year. 7,000, 24,000, 50,000. After you're in business longer and longer, those jumps aren't going to be as big, but regardless, you should be increasing your income and your revenue every single year you're in business. If for some reason you are stuck at an income cap, you may have an upper limit problem. Uh, number two, you can't get past a certain number of customers. Now this goes along with the first one, really, right? For me, I couldn't get past around 600, I think the number was actually 612 customers. For whatever reason, I would implement all these marketing strategies and I was doing this and I was doing that, trying to better my business. And for whatever reason, I could not get past the 600 number. Well, I have now since tripled that number, yay me, but I was stuck there for quite some time. So if you're stuck at the same number of customers, you might have an upper limit problem. Number three, you pick fights about nothing when things are going well. I do this, I did this, I still do this, and my loving husband Billy is usually <laughs> on the receiving end of this. But to put this in perspective for you, let's just say you have this amazing week. You get nine new clients, you hire two awesome new pet sitters, you get five amazing testimonials, you create a new strategic alliance, you get a couple new referral partners, Things could not be going better for you in your business. And for whatever reason, your husband or your wife walks through the door and you find yourself picking a fight with them for absolutely no reason. This is a sign of self-sabotage. Things are going way too well in your life and you have to do something to bring that thermostat down. All right, number four, you never invest in hard assets. So these are for people that like to spend to learn, but will not spend to earn. So these are for people, this is for people who love to buy classes or trainings. Um, they like to learn about business or they like to learn about bettering themselves. When it comes to actually buying something of like a hard asset that you need for your business, you're like, nope, that's, that's next year. Nope, that's two years from now. You know, you need a new website. You know you need a professional website design. Nope, nope, don't have the money for that. Or, 
you need a new professional logo design. Eh, not on the list. You know, I need to be making X amount before I'm going to invest in that. Um, this may be a sign that you have an upper limit problem. Sign number five, you abandon money making projects right after the idea generation stage. So if you're still walking the dogs, you have a lot of time to think. And I used to walk the dogs and think about a million things. But I bet you're thinking of different ideas for your business. I'm sure you are. You know, I should get the new website designed or I should hire my first new pet sitter or I should really write my operations manual. And you think about these great things, all of which are going to improve your business, but that's where it ends. It, the idea in your head and you never put the, those ideas into action, you are most likely suffering from an upper limit problem. Number six, you leave projects 70 to 90% done. So some people take the idea, they start implementing, they start you know, getting, gaining momentum, doing the project, and then you get to about 70 to 90% done. Say it's the website. You have this beautiful website just sitting there waiting for you to make live, and for whatever reason, you never do it. If you're doing this, you definitely have an upper limit problem. Number seven, this is interesting. I feel like this happens to me sometimes. Um, you get sick right after a success or at the very last moment. So again, things are kicking along, you're cruising, you're doing awesome, and all of a sudden you get your sore throat. All of a sudden your stomach starts to hurt. All of a sudden you get some type of illness that stops you in your tracks. As Hendricks puts it, the illness or accident is your unconscious mind's clunky way of doing you a favor. It's in these moments that the unconscious mind goes to work on a solution. The solutions it comes up with are often inelegant, primitive, but they are direct and effective and usually involve pain of some kind. So do you find this happening? Do you find as soon as you start gaining momentum, all of a sudden you get sick and get stopped in your tracks? If so, you might have an upper limit problem. Number eight, you walk away from deals. So this would be, okay, I just, this new client just contacted me. They travel the world. They're going to be out of town all summer. They want me to stay at their awesome house with their pool and their jacuzzi, and I never called them back. Or this amazing dog walking client that needs me two visits a day, Monday through Friday, and their email is sitting in my inbox, and I never follow up with them or a strategic alliance or referral partner says, hey, let's go grab coffee. Let's talk about our businesses and see how we can help uh, each other out. They give you your card, you never call them. If you are doing this, you are very much probably <laughs> suffering from an upper limit problem. Nine, there's money in your inbox. So there's money on the table and you're not going to get it. And this is, I mean, I. 100% used to suffer from this. My roommate used to borrow my coats and she'd find checks in my pockets or she'd find checks laying around the house and she'd be like, wow, you must be really rich that you don't need to deposit your checks in the bank. And I was like, I didn't treat my money with respect and I wasn't cashing the money that people were giving me. Um, this was definitely a sign that I had an upper limit problem. And number 10, the 10th sign that you may have an upper limit problem are you allowing other people's problems to throw you off your plans? 100% guilty of this. So again, cruising along, you're focused, you're going through your to-do list, you're, you're getting new clients, you're hiring new sitters, you're getting uh, rave reviews, and all of a sudden your best friend calls you, I need to talk, I have a problem. And you drop whatever you're doing, and all of a sudden her problem takes over your life, and it takes over your, your focus, and it takes over your... Um, inspiration that you're having in the projects that you're working on, you're allowing other people's problems to stop you in your tracks, you very well may be suffering from an upper limit problem. How many times do you think I'm going to say that term <laughs> before the end of this video? Okay, so what can you do about your upper limit problem? So say, you know, you have one, two, three, maybe all of these problems, and you say, oh my god, what do I do? First thing I would say is, go buy Gay Hendricks' book, The Big Leap, and I will link to it below for sure. But as Gay says, benign vigilance. So in his book, Hendrick, 
Hendricks refers to benign vigilance as paying keen but relaxed attention and just basically keeping your eye out for specific patterns. What are the things that keep coming up for you? Are you getting sick a lot right around the time that things are starting to go well? Are you easily getting sidetracked by your friends or your mother or your brother calling you with their problems? Are you avoiding these big kid expenditures in your business that you need to take your business to the next level? Are you allowing amazing opportunities that are sitting right in your inbox or on your voicemail without following up with them? Are these things that you continuously do? The first step in all of this is awareness. And again, you're never cured, but when you really start paying attention, you're like, oh my goodness, this is insane. I cannot believe I'm doing this to myself. I'm totally self-sabotaging myself. All right, guys, so that was the 10 signs that you may have an upper limit problem. I hope you found it helpful. If um, you have any questions, or uh, leave a comment below, or uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. All right, guys, I am wishing you a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.